From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. It's Like Us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more t- for less money. More importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Six six Yvette on the Tom Like a Show with your professor. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to ask you. Um, my boyfriend and I had um, intercourse, and I got happened to get pregnant. We had a condom, but it broke apparently. And um, and darling, uh, darling, uh, darling, tell me why you're not using birth control. Um, I I, I don't know. I was on it, but then um, I got off of it. Why did you get off of it? I, I think it was causing me to, like, gain a lot of weight. I was trying to figure out which one would work best. And, and why didn't you use another form of birth control in the meantime? Well, that's what I was in the, in the process of it. I don't mean a condom. I mean you use something. on Not your. Very, well, that's why I was in the process of I have to get an appointment and they have to, you know, have, there's a certain amount of time that you can um, go back, get off of it and then go on something else. So I didn't, I didn't use anything, but I just thought the condom would be secure, you know? Uh, they're they're pretty lousy. Yeah. So I want to have an abortion, but my boyfriend doesn't want me to get one. Does, in this case, does it matter? Does he have, like, a, a say in it? Or? No, he doesn't. He has no rights at all. I'm sorry? He has no rights at all. He has no nothing to say in it? Nope. So I can go ahead and do it? You certainly can. Well, that's all I wanted to By the know. way, you didn't have to tell him you were pregnant. You just could have gone and had an abortion. Oh, I didn't know. I, I just... Um, what, well, you thought I, there was a law? You had to tell him? No, I don't think so. I just did tell him, though. I told him. Why'd you do that? I don't know. I guess I wanted to share it with him. I don't know. But, you know, there are sometimes people just can't shut up. Yeah, that's me. Wouldn't that have been a good idea to just shut up? Yes. Yes. Well, then, I learned my lesson, and now I can go ahead and do what I got to do. I just wanted to hear it from you. So. You certainly can. Oh, well, thank you, Tom, and you rock on. Your show's bad, and I, I just started listening. My friend Mark out there, if he's listening, thanks to him, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to listen to you. So it's a pleasure. Well, I love that part. <laughs> thank you so much for the call. All right, Tom, you have a nice day. You too. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. There's no law that says you have to tell him that. Why'd you do that? Just don't do it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. James on the Tom Likas Show with your professor. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. Hey, trouble, trouble, trouble. I'm in this uh, the situation where I, did, I was banging this chick about two months ago, and I found out she poked holes in my condom. She poked holes? How did she get her hands on your condom? I have them stashed away in my drawer. Why'd you do that? Uh, I don't like keeping them in my wallet. Yeah, I understand that, but uh, then you left her alone in your room. Well, you know, sometimes you just got to go to the bathroom or go grab a beer out of the fridge, you know. But I want to know, how did you do it? How did you convince your exes to go with the abortions? I need to figure out... Well, first of all, before having sex with them, um, I had the conversation. That's smart. And I talked to them point blank about this, and I said, uh, I don't want to have kids. If you have any doubt at all about what you would do if you got pregnant, I need to know now. And uh, there were many times <laughs> they were caught off guard and they didn't know what to say, and I was like, I, all right, that's my answer. See ya. What about, was money a factor? Do you think they'll, because what if I throw her a few dollars and have her shut up? 
uh, how pregnant is she? She's two months. And uh, she told you that there's no two ways about it. She's having a baby. Well, she comes from the Catholic family, but she hasn't told her Catholic, uh, her family yet. So I'm, I'm trying to get to her before she gets to her parents. Right. And why hasn't she told her family? Well, because she hasn't had kids before, and she's not really uh, sure what to do. So I want to be first. So let me say, she's Catholic, so she so she can't have an abortion, but she can fornicate, and she can also defraud you by putting holes in your condom. Yeah, okay. is there a way I can maybe too? Well, I'll I don't think that's like that. I don't think that's likely to have success. If she wants to get pregnant so badly that she defrauded you and put holes in the condom, what? what, what what do you think you're going to accomplish by trying to offer her money? I don't know. The, I don't know what she wants. Why are you still... Get, uh, if she has refused to have an abortion, why are you still talking to her? I'm not talking. I'm talking to you. No, no. But you're still talking to her, too. Uh, to convince her, that's the only behalf. But are you making any headway when you try to convince her? Uh, she's still up in the air, so I want to see if there's... All right. Well, did you ask me. her what it would take to get her to have the abortion? What would it take? What would it take? Why don't you ask her what it would take? All right. And Tell her you love her very much. You do kind of a variation on the Hail Mary. You yeah, love her very butter, much. Butter it, butter it all up, right? One day you'll be happy to have kids with her, but you're not ready. You don't have a home. You don't have yeah, money. Exactly. You're not ready. And one day soon you will be ready. You will be prepared. I'll tell her that she'll start looking fat if she starts showing. No, no, that's not what you do. You tell you tell her that one day soon you will be ready, and then the two of you can talk about it. All right. I mean, clearly she's a bitch for having done this behind your back. Yes. Did she ever tell you she wanted to have a kid? No. I'm convinced that she poked the holes. I don't know anybody else would do such a thing. And she didn't say that she was looking for kids, and I'm safe by using condoms. That's my choice. How do you and... know there were holes? Do you, you actually saw them? Uh, I saw the wrapper. I'm like, I looked at it. Then I went to the trash can. I don't throw them down the toilet because the toilet will clog up. But um, I looked in the trash can after I saw the wrapper. Wrapper and there's everybody's doing it today. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's bad. But okay, I'll do what you said. Um, one other thing. Can you uh, give me a bong toke with a thank you, Jesus? I can indeed. There you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is, oh, my God, there's one after another here. Steven on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going? Better for me than for you, apparently. Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Steven. And, uh, Are you a new student, Steven? A um, little bit. Actually, I, I've been listening on and off since uh, I was 16, ever since uh, All right. I had my first uh, part-time job. All right, so tell everybody uh, what you did. Um, actually, uh, I really, I didn't, I just, I said that because I've been trying to call and talk to you ever since, uh, I was 18, like a year ago. I, I really didn't get my girlfriend pregnant. That was just a lie, just to try and talk to you. Nice talking to you, pal. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Raul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, look, I have a big question for you. I'm a loyal fan. I man, I follow every single step that you say. Um, I don't spend any money on any girls. I I don't go clubbing. and I hate all that stuff. But I have a big issue. I was I was brought here by my parents. I'm an illegal immigrant. Um, I work my behind off trying to make good money. I, I make good money with a buddy of mine that started his own business. But now what do I do? I have a girlfriend. I know it's a big no, but it, it helps because she pays everything. And in order to succeed in here, you need papers. You need a green card. You need everything. You know, you, you basically need a license just to get around. But what do I do? Well, uh, <laughs> as you know, uh, uh, you know, when you get married, it's uh, not the easy process it used to be uh, to become a citizen. You know that, right? I understand that. I mean, do you really want to live with her? Do you really want? I don't. I don't. That's the thing. I, I, I go. You're, you're, you're my Jesus. You know what I mean? I, I follow every single step you do. I, I hate my friend because my friend has a kid and he's 21, 
<laughs> and you know, I give him crap about it every single day that we 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 work together. But it's like I don't want to live with her. I don't. I, I I hate when she comes over. I hate that. You know what I mean? I have to spend time with her. I I'm working right now. I I my money comes first. But I need. Are, are you Mexican? Yes. Is she Mexican? No. What is, what is her background? She's white. She's white. Okay. Yeah. Does she want to have a baby? Um, not at the moment. She's on birth control, and we use condoms. But has she talked about that? No, she hasn't. Like I, maybe I, she doesn't I, want to get to have a baby till she's married. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. That's the thing, though. Me, I, I, like I said, I follow your orders. I tell her, you know what? I'm too young to have kids. I don't want kids right now. I have nieces and nephews, and they're annoying. So I really don't want to go that way. I, I can't stand kids crying. I can't stand them running around in the stores. So I, t I told her, I told her, like, I don't want kids. I, I, I can't afford a kid. I'd rather have a nice Porsche instead of a kid. So. And she, I, I put it through her head. I put it through her head every single week. I tell her once a week, no kids. But you have to tell her once a week because you think maybe she wants kids. No, 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 no. She never brings it up. But I, it's just like a safe fall for me. Like, once we see a kid, I'll just say, oh, man, I hate kids. You know what I mean? But she never, she, she I actually bring up the no kids. And she only brought it up once when we first got together, talking about what do you feel about marriage? What do you feel about kids? And I told her, no, I don't feel like having kids, not, not ever. I don't. And I told her about the marriage thing, but then you know what I mean. Like just in order to get ahead in life, I need that. I need those papers. I need to become a citizen. I I understand that. And she wants to marry you. She's willing to do it to help me. You understand she'd be breaking the law, and so would you. Well, I mean, we'll live together and we'll do everything, but that's like she wants to do that. She wants, she wants the whole. Okay, we're living together. She wants the wedding ring. She wants to. She lives in in a house. She wants to. You know what I mean? Cook dinner. She wants to do all that stuff. You know what? I'd rather go with my buddy down to Jack in the Box and eat a uh, a whopper or whatever. What do we say? Jack, well, Jack's ninety nine cent chicken sandwich than to have a girl in my house cooking me dinner just because of the whole thing of like oh. Oh, I have to call her if I don't show, if I don't go home, if I'm going to be late. I don't like doing all that. She wants to do that. She wants to be home and say, oh, no, I'll kick you and your buddy dinner. I don't want that. All right. See, so, I mean, I'm, not, I'm really not trying to break the law. And, and no, no, I know I, I, I know I know where you're coming from. You understand, though, that you are then beholden to her for over two years. Right. That means... Uh, she can out you at any time. Of course, she'd be outing herself, but she can out you at any time. Exactly. You have That's a fight fair. with her, she can out you. She can also do what uh, someone I know threatened to do to uh, her girl, that uh, his girl that uh, was from another country. He could just say, I'm not coming. She can say, I'm not coming to the INS with you. Not going to do the interview with you. Oh, that, that is true. I have thought about all that. I just, I don't know. So you say, no, don't go for it. I'm just letting you know what the risks are and the complications. Right. If you think you could stand to be beholden to her for two years. You I can, really doubt it, man. If you I, think I mean, you I can guess. stand to have to go, like, on vacation with her and take pictures of, like, you know, the Eiffel Tower or the Grand Canyon or whatever. <laughs> it, because that I'm telling you, they're going to ask for that. You know what else they're going to ask for? They're going to ask for copies of your utility bills to show the two of you live in the same address. They're going to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been with her for about a year, so. I mean, are you living with her? No, 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 no. Well, that's no, what. But no, 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 but they. No, no. Yeah, you but see, the INS is going to want to know that you live with her. Oh, okay. And then they're going to want to see proof that you live with her. Right. So they're going to ask you things like, "Let me see a photograph of the two of you on vacation." Right. Well, we're too poor to <laughs> vacation. <laughs> yeah, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to. to no, no, no. You got to no, take I, me I seriously understand. here, okay? Because I'm trying to tell you something. That's very, I don't want you to end up in prison or being deported, okay? So okay. I'm trying to help you here. Okay. It, you, they will ask for that. Right, right. You right. will have to prove you went with her somewhere. Right. You will have to prove the two of you pay the gas bill together. Right. You will have to prove you have a bank account together. You will have to prove you filed a tax return together. Are you prepared to do all these things? 
Uh, wow, I don't think so. I'm wow. They're gonna do that. Ever since 9-11, they're cracking down on people like you, and I'm telling you, these are the things you're going to have to do. Right, right, right. And that means you're going to end up having to spend more time with her than you're used to. That right. means she's going to have to take your last name. That means you're going to have to trot on down to Wells Fargo or the Bank of America and set yourself up a checking account together and then use it. Right. That means you're going to have to know uh, her gas bill, her electric bill, and all that. Right, right. I mean, there's a lot of work you have to do in order to do what you're trying to do. Right. And okay. every, I know lots of people in your position, and I have known many of them over the years, and when they find out what's really involved, many of them say, you know what, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd rather stick it out and just find another way. Could maybe get me a lawyer or something if, you know, save up a little money. Right. And, uh, yeah, uh, me, yeah. uh, me, my last choice is to ever be beholden to a female. Right, right. Because yeah. they will F you over. They'll get pregnant or they'll make demands or they'll start nagging you. Anytime somebody has you as a prisoner or a hostage, they will start to take advantage of it. Right, right. Yeah, that is true. And you have to be prepared to deal with that. I mean, can you live with that? If some chick said, if you don't have a baby with me, I'm going to turn you into the INS. Oh, no, nah, man. Well, that, I mean, I'm just giving you examples of the kinds of things people can do. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, no. Imagine no, that. He married me, but he doesn't want to have a baby. That's because this is a real marriage. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'm going to save up a little more money. And just... All right. All right, thanks. Hey, can you blow me up? Of course I can, Raul. Here you go. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I called you, and you let me know that I was a loser because... I was paying for my girlfriend's college education while I was going to a lesser school. I dumped that bitch the next day. She was so confused, and I just told her, like it's 101, baby. <laughs> That's like Zorro making the sign of the Z before he leaves. That's great. It's Like His 101 on the Tom Like His Show. The Tom Like His Show. The 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. It's like it's 101. I am your professor. This is David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How you doing? Doing okay, David. All right, so I got some bad news for you. I uh, my, my girl got pregnant about three months ago, uh, and, you know, I think I went against your advice. I know you told me not to put her in a jacuzzi, not to give her coffee in the morning, and, you know, not to give her a glass of wine at night, but, you know, I was such a gentleman... And I felt bad because she was living with me. So every morning I woke up extra early. I made her a double shot of espresso, got her Red Bulls during the day, and I uh, gave her a glass of wine at dinner every night. And the worst thing happened last week. She uh, she miscarried. I am just ashamed of you. Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really upset about it. And, so you're uh, telling me now you won't have the joy of being a father of a child that you didn't plan? That's right. I mean, I want to be a father. You know, I wanted to be so bad. And, uh, you know, even though I asked her to have an abortion originally and she didn't want to do it, you know, I, I do want to be a father someday. Um, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I accepted the fact a couple weeks later and I just can't believe that after I accepted it, she actually miscarried. So oh, I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really broken down right now. Horrible. That's horrible. Uh, how did she feel about that? You know, she's taking it all right. Um, she actually told her family after um, she miscarried. And so, uh, as you know, um, her stuff was moved out three days ago from my house. Of course. Yeah, you know, I mean, she couldn't deal with living in the house after miscarrying my baby, so. So she punished you by leaving? No, we, we, agree, we agreed that without that connection with the child, it would be best for us both to move on and, and start somewhere else. Oh, boy. So let me understand so. this. You uh, went against my advice, and you took your girl to the jacuzzi, Gave her double shots of espresso, energy drinks, glasses of wine, and then she miscarried. And on top of that, now she's decided it's time for her to move out? It's, uh, I'm telling you, it sucks. And now, in the last three nights, I've only gotten laid twice. Only twice? Only twice. There's been last night. Last night, I didn't get any. I didn't it get any serves you right. So, 
You know, and, and, you know, they were two different women, so I know that's kind of gross to sleep with two women in three nights. Ugh. You know, I had, to, I had to find something, right? That's absolutely awful. So uh, I just wanted to call in for your consol- uh, consolidation, consult, whatever the word is. Consolation. Consolation, thank you. And uh, just let you know that you're the man, and uh, I love your show, and uh, keep on doing what you're doing, Doug. All right, David. Uh... Thank you. See, he did not follow my advice. He went and took her pre- his pregnant girlfriend. She wouldn't have an abortion, so he took her into the jacuzzi against my advice. Then he gave her the double shot espressos and the energy drinks and the glasses of wine. And my God, she miscarried. Of course she miscarried. That is tragic, Art. It's tragic. And now she moved out on him. Even worse. And now he's forced to have sex with all these other women. Jesus. You hate to hear that. If you're listening, don't you take your pregnant girlfriend into the jacuzzi. You might get the same result he got. And yes, yes, alcohol and energy drinks and double shot espressos, uh, that could all call someone a miscarry, and it would be wrong to do that. So I'm telling you right now, don't do it. And then after she got pregnant against your will, and after she uh, was ready to have a baby, and then she miscarries, she might leave you, like his girl. And you wouldn't want that. Uh, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. I think a little tear came in my eye. This is, uh, mm. let's say Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, brother. Not much, son. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and start it off. Um, about two years ago, my parents moved to Texas. Um, I stayed out here for school and it went with my brother and my sister. And uh, my brother decided within the first month of uh, being out in Texas to get engaged. And he's uh, 18 years old. Well, he was then. So he was doing that for a couple of months. And then he decided to end up getting his girl pregnant, but she miscarried over two months. So I guess this threw him in a spiral, and he started to get into drugs heavily over out in Texas. Um, he was doing marijuana, cocaine, and then I heard he was doing a little bit of meth. And uh, my parents found out about this, and so they decided, you know what? And his uh, name is him. Dean J. D'Amelio? What? And his name is Dean J. D'Amelio? No. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, <laughs> Um, they decided to have him come out here and live with me and, you know, show him. Wait, 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 who, wait, who decided that? Well, my parents and I kind of agreed with them because I saw what all this was doing to him out there. And so, you know, I decided to take him in. Under- what, what made anyone think that moving in with you would change anything? Well, because I'm, I'm pretty irresponsible financial wise. And that doesn't wise. mean he's going to be responsible in any way, shape or form. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, <laughs> yeah, he came out here, and he's been living out here for about a couple of months. And um, he's been looking for a job. I've been his rent, you know, food, utilities, everything. And he still hasn't found a job. But what I've been finding out is that I've been giving him gas money so he can go drive to these places. Why are you doing and, that? Well, because he's my brother, and I, I want to help him out. You well, know, where are your parents? Out. If your parents thought this was such a bright idea, why aren't they kicking in cash? Well, they, they were. Um, they were putting, uh, you know, giving me some money here and there and uh, trying to help us out and we'll help him get started out here. So, I mean, we're both contributing to this. And um, So how's it, how's it working? <laughs> well, that's the reason why I'm calling. Understand, because... I had a family with, with, I had 18 first cousins. Uh, three of them were brothers, all heroin addicts. So I have lots of experience in this area. Go right ahead. Well, I'm sure you can see where this is going. Like, all the money that I've been giving him, uh, he's been, you know, buying drugs with it. That's uh, great. He, I'm <laughs> How'd you find that out? Um, I found it in his room um, when he's gone. Uh, you know, I was just looking around. I just happened to step on him. And well, why, why him. didn't you throw him out that moment? See, that's the thing, because um, he's had a pretty rough childhood uh, growing up. And so well, what about you? <laughs> I've... Uh, Kept my head on straight. All right. Um, then, then you know what? He should be a man and step up to the plate. 
Well, I mean, he is, he's bipolar. He has ADHD and... Blah, blah, and blah. You, and, you, and, and you are an enabler and you're codependent. Uh, you, have, you have problems, too. I, I know, but I, it's hard for me to, you know, watch him sit here and see him do this. Yeah, but what are you, a drug counselor? Are you, are you running no, a rehab no. center over there? What do you know about that? Yeah, I, I know, but I, you know, I just need to help him out because I don't yeah, want Yeah, fine. To... Here's how you help him out. You take him to the rehab center and you leave him there. Uh, and you visit him on Sundays. Yeah, well, uh, yeah I don't know. Well, he, he, he needs professional need help. What are you laughing about? No. Uh, you think that's funny? No, no, I don't think it's funny at all. I just It's really hard just to see him like this. And, I mean, we've never really considered that. And, Why not? Uh, I Well, because I know if I was to bring it up at all, he would pretty much pack up and drive off somewhere. And, you know uh, what? Then, then you know what? It's called friend. Tough Love. You know, there's a book from the 70s you want to read called Tough Love. Get it out of the library. Buy it on Amazon.com. Tough Love. Uh, that's a book. Right. I'm telling you, that's a book you need to read. See, well, I I thought of, that's why I'm calling because I want to know if I was, you know, just kick him out. But I'm afraid he'll move in with his girlfriend out in Texas. You know, that's his problem. You know what? That's his problem. All right, that's not your problem. And if he does get his girlfriend pregnant, it's also not your problem. You're not going to be helping him support the baby. You're not going to be taking him and the baby in. Forget it. No, but I know my parents will, and it'll just. Well, that's because your parent. You know what? That is your parents' problem. And by the way, your parents shouldn't have let them have such a tough childhood, because now they're going to pay for it. No, no, it wasn't like their fault. It was just because you know him being bipolar and just I don't know. He has really low self esteem and. Th but you know, are I'm you not... a psychiatrist? No, no. I'm that's just... what he needs is a psychiatrist. That's true. It's, he does, but I mean, he's been to one before. No, he needs yeah. one today. Okay. I'll try to go ahead and talk to my parents about that. That's what he needs. You are not a rehab center. You're not a psychiatrist. You're not a psychologist. Mm -hmm. You can't dispense medication for people who are bipolar. You're not a drugstore. Yeah. And by the way, if he's keeping drugs at your place, what happens if somebody finds out about it and you get raided? Hello? Well, that's, yeah. Well, yeah, what? No, no, so I... Do you know what the penalty is if the cops come and find coke at your place? Yeah. Uh, you want to find bad. out? No, I really don't. <laughs> it's just not acceptable. Yeah, so just kick him out? I'm telling you what to do. You, you talk, Your parents talked you into this. You tell your parents he's going to rehab or he's going to a doctor, but he, there's not going to be cocaine stashed at your house. Not happening. It's not going to be a crystal meth at your house. And the right. next time, if he's still living with you, the next time he does it, you let everybody know you're calling 911 and you're turning him in. Uh, I don't it's know. called Tough Love. Read the book. All right. Don't be lazy. <laughs> when you get off the phone, Mr. Lazy, you go to Amazon.com and look up the book Tough Love and order it. All right. And yeah. read it cover to cover. And find out what it's all about to uh, to be in a family full of codependent people and uh, enablers and uh, you know people who just sit by and watch people uh, un, uh, uh, get all uncorked like this and they don't get the help they need because you're sitting there thinking your mere presence is going to cure them. Okay. Your presence okay. isn't curing crap. And by the way, there's women in California to impregnate as well. Oh yeah. Just so how do you know he won't do that? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. Just think, I just thought that maybe him being under my wing or something. Or under your wing? Unless your first name is Doctor. Unless your first name is Doctor. He's not under anything. He's living rent-free in your place, and he's using drugs that you're buying for him. You're not helping him at all. All right. You you hear what I'm saying? You are buying yeah, yeah. you are buying him drugs. What's he doing for a living while he's living with you? Let me guess, nothing. Well, he's uh, he was signed up at a community college, and he's I guess taking a class. He's but... taking a class. That's yeah, that's wonderful. That, he's not studying for a degree. He's not working. No. You're paying for everything, including his drugs, and you think this is helping him? No. Harsh reality. 
Yeah. Well, you know what? Your whole fat. By the way, my family has a lot of these issues. Okay, so I'm 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 not just uh, coming down on you. I um, know about this stuff because I've seen it up close. Yeah. I know how it works. Because my family, uh, the, my, especially my extended family, had a lot of these issues. Okay. And I know how it works. And you are sitting there right now thinking you're helping him and you're actually making the problem worse because you're, he, he has no responsibility. He's taking no responsibility. You're all buying him his drugs and giving him a rent free place to live. Yeah. Okay. Are you kidding me? You think you're helping him? Look at it as a dispassionate person, a dispassionate outsider. You're not helping anybody. Hang on a second. Eddie, what did you want to say to Anthony here? You know what? What I want to tell this guy is, you know, it sucks and everything, it, it, it sucks and everything but you got to tell him, look, bro, you're effing up. I love you, but you're effing up, dog. And if you keep effing up, man, I'm, you know, like Tom says, I'm going to call 911. I'm going to take mm. you in to rehab. You know, or, or or something. I mean, you know, it's like, it's tough love. You love him. That's your brother. But you got to tell that. And then, Tom, what I wanted to tell you, though, is like, at the same time, I mean, I get your point, but you're also, I mean, this is your brother. It's also kind of hard because it's your brother. You know? The and, fact uh, that it's hard like doesn't, homie. but the fact that it's hard doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to do. Yeah, yeah. By the way, the I mean, book Tough Love, we got, uh, Dean just found it on Amazon.com. It's $7.50. Right. You read this yeah, book. I'm going to find that book, too. But, you know, it's also hard, Tom, because it's like, because then, you know, having bipolar, you might say, well, you know what, you know, you don't love me. What, you know, and I mean, a friend, a homie, a bitch, that's something. But, you know, your own brother, that kind of complicates things. His brother, more, needs, things, his brother needs a doctor. Today, yeah. today, and if well, he's what giving, if he takes it like, what if he takes it like, you know what, you know, you don't love me, and you know, and like that's what this. tough what love is all here? about. You know what? That that's what addicts frequently do. They yeah. say you don't love me, you don't care about me, and they try to play on your emotions, and that's what how they keep. Guy? That's how they keep getting away with what they do. Trust me, I've seen it in my own family. Tom Like It. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Like It. In this day and age, for a man to get married, he's only looking to lose. It's the Tom Like It Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Like It Show. Tom, that's our telephone number, Scott, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good evening, Tom. Hi. You know, I um, I got to admit, I I don't like your show. My girlfriend actually has it programmed on my car, so I, I listen to it sometimes. I don't ever listen to it when I'm with her. Right. Because I just, I just don't agree. But that last caller, the brother who's using drugs and staying at the house, uh, I, you're a very wise man. You're come 100% correct on this. I've been on the other side. I was the loser brother. And if this guy doesn't do some tough love, follow your advice. He's going to kill his brother. Uh, or at the very least, his brother's going to get in trouble because uh, you know what happens with people who use drugs and get sloppy. Eventually, the police follow you home, get a broken taillight or something, and suddenly your house being ransacked by the police department. And suddenly you were trying to do a good thing for your brother, and suddenly you're in jail. He's, you're a hundred percent right. I'm going to actually listen to your show more and maybe have more open mind on what you're saying because for the first time ever, I completely agree with you. Well, it had to happen eventually, Scott. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Hampton on the Tom Likas show with your professor. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Pretty good. Uh, I'm just looking for some advice right now. I'm in this relationship with a consultant. Not too much older of a woman. She's Why are you in a relationship? You're 21 years old, it says here. Well, uh, we don't really call it a relationship. We don't really title each other boyfriend and girlfriend. You just yeah. called it a relationship. Well, all right. Then in a relationship, it would be, I guess, because we do hang out often. Uh, we go out, see movies. Do you have sex with other time. people? Uh, not really. What do you mean, not, started... not really or no? Uh, well, since I started dating her, I kind of dropped the other ones just because... Well, that sounds like a relationship to me, son. Why are you in one? Why aren't you dating other people? You're only 21. Um, 
I I guess it's just a moral dilemma for me. Why? Why? I have no idea, really. Are your parents together? Yes, they are. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And what does your dad say about this? Uh... He says as long as I'm doing good and I'm having fun, then it's okay. Like uh-huh. To have a relationship or to have sex? Uh, I'm pretty sure he means sex. Right. Uh, he has no idea, though, that you have no game whatsoever and you've decided to fall for one person way too early in life. Well, it's not like I'm falling for her. Yes, it is. Because you have uh, blown away all the other options you had. Right. So, yes, that's what it is. Call it what it is. All right. Well, then it is a relationship, but then I must say, like, I don't pay a cent for anything we ever do. She's always paying for everything. You know, and, like, I just feel like this is kind of almost like a dream. Well, it's yeah, but it's, a, it's an investment for the future. Yeah. Because eventually investment. she's taking your sperm and making your baby. That's where this is going. Well, so she makes a little investment now. Down the line, you'll be the one working and paying the bills. Mm-hmm. That's how this works. Well, then I guess my other question would be, like, I'm really sick of living at home. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like So get a roommate. Thing. Get an apartment. Right. You don't well, need to live with your girlfriend. Correct. And okay. I know that's what you want to do, isn't it? Well, I just... The main reason is I really want to move out, and then on top of that, I get... That's not a good enough reason to move in with some woman. It's not. Well, I'm having sex with her, like, every night. I don't care. You should have your own place or live with a roommate. Right. Otherwise, it's like being married, and eventually you'll be treated like you're married. Mm -hmm. Have you heard the way married people sound on this program, how happy they're not? Yes, I do all the time. I'm not really planning on getting married anytime soon. Yeah, well, guess what? Uh, your girlfriend is going to treat it like you are married. Mm-hmm. Well, she's, like, very open with this relationship, I guess. Like, how... How open is she? Is she open to an open relationship? Why don't you date other people? Right. Oh, hmm. It's not that open, is it? No, I guess not. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's a bad idea to move in for free. It's a bad idea to move in ever. Ever. Be a man. Get your own place. Gotcha. All right. Uh, appreciate it, Tom. Here to help. Holy Christ. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to D on the Tom Likas show. What's going on, Likas? I am King Likas. Doing great. Man, I got some stories for you, buddy. Have you ever heard of the area code rule? That's what I call it. A what? The area code rule. So say you got a chick, right? You live in L.A. She's coming from, uh, let's say she's coming from Washington somewhere, right? She comes to visit you and she doesn't put out. She just broke the area code rule, right? What is the area code rule? I'd like to know. Well, the area code rule is just like I said. She comes to visit you from another state, right? She comes to your home, lays with you in your bed, but she doesn't put out. Well, uh, then I have the hotel rule, where uh, if somebody comes to my place hoping to get a free place to stay for the weekend, and they don't pay for it in trade, I tell them where the nearest hotel is located, and I give them a good swift kick at the front door. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. But anyway, this is what I got to tell you, man. So, you know, you're always talking about don't be the nice guy, don't be the nice guy. So this happened on Tuesday, right? So Wednesday, I just went off on him. You know, I told him, hey, I want you to go home. It was two chicks. Well, I get home Tuesday from work, right? Kicking it with him, and they ended up giving me the menage, bro. Is that so? That's freaking so, man. After after not putting out for all of Tuesday night in my bed, I'm up trying to get some, you know, tail. And then Wednesday, I went hard. I told them that they should go home. I didn't enjoy their company. And then Wednesday, I got everything that I wanted. And you met her where? On the Internet, D? What was that? You met her on the Internet? No, 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 no. I, uh, I know these. Uh, I'm, I'm from Michigan, so I'm not- All right, well, I wish I had more time. The Tom Likas Show.